Would it make a difference in your life if you just decided to live with integrity in every area of life? Of course it would, and we're going to talk about that today from Proverbs chapter 22. Hey guys, and welcome back to God's Word Made Simple by Simple Servant Ministries. My name is Aaron Hawk, and if this is your first time visiting with us, I just want to say welcome and thank you for joining us today. God's Word Made Simple is an online discipleship ministry dedicated to taking God's Word and making it simple. We want to help you understand God's Word, apply it to your life, and grow in your relationship with the Lord. Also, if you appreciate this ministry and content at some point, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn that bell notification to all so you don't miss any future videos. We would love to have you as part of our family. So today we're covering Proverbs chapter 22 verses 1 through 7. There are several verses in here that I could do entire lessons or sermons on, so I'm going to try to make this a fairly quick one. Um, we'll see how that goes. All right, verse 20, or chapter 22 verse 1. A good name is to be desired more, or sorry, a good name is to be more desired than great wealth. And this is one that I was taught when I was young, and it really stuck with me. This is one of those that is just permanently etched in my mind, and I believe, I hope, comes out in my life. A good name is to be more desired than great wealth. Favor is better than silver and gold. See, your integrity... I often teach my karate students, integrity means doing the right thing no matter what, even when no one's looking, and I teach it to them in a cadence, right? Integrity means, and then they repeat it back to me, and we go through that as a cadence, right? And it really helps ingrain it in their heads. But I also teach them in the leadership time, I teach them, look, integrity is one of the few things that nobody can take from you. Somebody can take your house, they can take your car, they can take your family, they can take almost everything in your life, including your life, but they can't take your integrity. You have to choose to give up your integrity. And as I tell my students, I don't know about you, but if there is something that only I have the ability to give up and nobody can take it from me, I want to protect it because that means it's precious, it's precious, it's special because nobody can take it. A good name is to be desired more than great wealth. See, that good name, when people know they can trust you, when, when your name is spoken and at the very least, regardless of what they think of you, at the very least they go, you know, guy's a man of his word. If he says something, it's true. If he testifies about this, I know that it's true. If he says that, I know I can trust it. That is priceless. It is to be more desired than great wealth. Favor, which comes from that, is better than silver and gold. The rich and the poor, verse 2, the rich and the poor have a common bond. The Lord is maker of them all. So rich people, stop being snobs and looking down on poor people. God is your maker and God is their maker. You are equal in God. Poor people, stop resenting rich people. God is the maker of both of you. You are equal in God. Verse 3, and I, I pause for a second because I really debate going into it at all. I think that lesson is needed more than ever in our society right now. It's always been a tension between rich people and poor people because it's easy for rich people to look down upon poor people. Well, all you need to do is work harder and you'd have stuff. And Well, sometimes that's just not true. You don't always start at the same place in life. You don't always have the same options available to you. Um, and poor people, it's really easy to look up and, you know, look up, see how we even use that in our language. Poor people, it's really easy to look at rich people and judge them and consider them snobs and selfish and all kinds of other things and resent them. And instead of doing that, why don't you work on trying to elevate yourself? Instead of being jealous for them, be happy for them and then work on elevating yourself, right? All right. All right, verse 3. The prudent sees the evil and hides himself, but the naive go on and are punished for it. And we've talked about this pretty extensively in some of our other Proverbs chapters, so I'm not going to go super in-depth into this one, but essentially naive means somebody that doesn't know any better, somebody that is 
we would say innocent, not truly innocent, but that's the way that we would usually word this. We we use the word naive, but people don't use it appropriately in, in America, I don't think. Um, but naive simply means you don't know any better. So the naive go on and are punished for it. For what? For when they see evil coming and they don't know any better, right? The prudent sees the evil and hides himself. So a smart person sees trouble coming and you avoid it. Somebody that's naive doesn't even realize that that's trouble coming. It's kind of like the old, uh, you're standing in the middle of the train tracks and you see a light approaching you, you know, the, the tunnel. Is it the light at the end of the tunnel or is it a train coming through that's going to kill you, right? Um, the prudent sees evil and hides himself. The naive goes on and are punished for it. All right, verse four, the reward of humility and the fear of the Lord. Notice those two things are tied together. The reward of humility and the fear of the Lord, the reward of those things, are riches, honor, and life. And riches doesn't always mean physical, although it can. And in this context, it's saying that that will be a reward. But bear in mind, it doesn't mean you're going to be rich just because you do the right thing. I'm not rich. I try to do the right thing. Now, in comparison to much of the rest of the world, I am and so are you. If you're watching this video, you are rich compared to a lot of people in the world. Um, but just don't assume that that means you're going to be rich by American standards is what I'm trying to say. Uh, verse 5, thorns and snares are in the way of the perverse. He who guards himself will be far from them. So, you know, it's it's the old live by the sword, die by the sword, right? If, you, if you're the type of person that looks out for other people to do them harm, then you're going to assume that everybody is out there to do you harm. You know, to the pure, all things are pure, but to those who are wicked and defiled... I can't remember, but I'll put the reference down in here, right? But if the pure, all things are pure is the part that I am remembering. We'll put the reference down in the uh, bottom of the screen there. Um, Thorns and snares are in the way of the perverse. He who guards himself will be far from them. When you're doing wickedness, you're going to get wickedness. Bottom line. Verse 6, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Um, that is one of the most misquoted verses in all of scripture. I did an entire video on that here, so I will put the link up in the card for you for that video. Um, but that is absolutely one of the most misquoted verses in all of scripture. Remember, Proverbs are general truths, not absolute truths for one. Um, for two, you know, I'm not even going to get into it. Go watch that video if you want to know what this one means, because I'll be here forever and end up repeating everything I said in that video. So go check out that video. And then verse seven, the rich rules over the poor and the borrower becomes the lender's slave. And the Bible, and especially Proverbs, continuously warns us against debt and especially uh, against becoming a um, co-signer is what we would call it in modern America. But over and over, we are taught that if you owe someone money, you're a slave to them until that money is paid off. And I think America can testify to that at this point. So guys, that's it. Shorter video today, a shorter section. We'll pick back up with verse eight uh, next week. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments or any comments, please also share in the comments. Um, otherwise, guys, as always, if you appreciate this ministry and this content, make sure and hit that like button, hit subscribe, turn that bell notification to all so you don't miss any future videos. We'd love to have you as part of our family. Also, if you want to support this ministry, the two best ways to do that, one is to hit that share button and help us get that subscriber count up so that we can literally get the word of God out there. Second, if you want to support us financially, we did not by any means meet our goals for Giving Tuesday last year, and we would definitely appreciate some support. So if you desire to support this ministry financially, there is a link down in the description. Even if you can only do a dollar or two a month, that adds up and it helps cover the costs of this ministry. Guys, thank you very much, and God bless.